Hi, another viewer question. It's from Evelyn. Evelyn said, I was wondering if you could do a video over the correlation between law of attraction and astrology and if we can influence this in a positive way. Okay, now I have many of you write to me about tarot cards, numerology, astrology, um, what's the other thing, psychic readings, mediums, you know, people telling you stuff from all these different forms of thinking, thoughts, different belief systems, okay? Now, when you understand that you are a conscious creator, but we know everything's already created, right? So you're selecting, which we talked about in the YouTube yesterday or the day before. You don't have to concern yourself with what numerology says or astrology says or a psychic says or whatever, you know. There's a whole long list of other things because those things can be a limitation to you believing you can create, you see. Now, I remember once, like I'm a Sagittarian and I remember someone saying, oh, you can't date that person because they're not a good astrological match for you. So I went, oh, okay. And then I would be reading astrology and trying to find, you know, somewhere that would say that that was a good match and all this stuff. And honestly, I drove myself crazy, not to mention going to psychics. Okay. You hear something you don't want to hear about being with a specific person and then you crash and burn mentally and emotionally. I remember once I went to a psychic, I heard something and I was not eating for like properly for over two months and I wasn't sleeping properly for over two months. I remember losing two sizes in weight, not because I wanted to lose weight, but because I was believing what I'd been told. It was like, it's like when you go to the doctor and you get a diagnosis, okay? You've got cancer, you're going to die most likely within the next six months. Now, this is a snapshot of where you are then. Now, remember, the doctor doesn't heal you. The astrology doesn't create your relationships. The tarot card reader only gives you their version of what they've read, okay? The, you know, whoever it is that you go to for numerology, they're just looking at what they're looking at. They're looking through like a little filter, but it's not looking at the big picture, which is God is your own human imagination, which means imagination creates reality, which trumps everything. Okay. Now you can believe that or not. For me, it set me free because I didn't have to go, oh, that person's not a Aries or an Aquarius or whatever it was that it was meant to be apparently good for me. I remember too, <laughs> I'm a fire horse in the Chinese horoscope. And I remember a woman saying to me once, gee, you're lucky you're here because they used to kill you at birth because you were bad luck. So, okay, that honestly, that made me laugh so hard. I had to lay on the couch because I had tears because obviously I didn't believe it. <laughs> But if I had, that could have been devastating. <laughs> so you got to look at what you're putting in your head and what you're believing. And I know some of you come from cultures that believe in astrology, cultures that believe in tarot, cultures that believe in numerology, cultures that believe in the doctor. Now, that's all fine, but it's you that cures yourself, technically speaking. The doctor doesn't cure you. You do. The astrology doesn't find your perfect match. You do through your vibration. And this is all about what goes out, what comes in. Now you can use all these things to lock you into having limitations or you can go, you know what? Frog it. I'm not going to believe this stuff. I don't care if it's part of my culture. And I can tell you there's some weird stuff in my culture around relationships and around lots of other subjects, which I'm not going to go into. But I choose to go, you know what? I don't like that about my culture. This part I do, this part I don't. I'm not going to ride that horse anymore, so to speak. So 
think for yourself. Choose what you want to believe. Choose stuff that makes you feel good. Choose stuff that empowers you. Choose stuff that makes you feel good about you and what you want. You know, it's like when we talk about the self-love, you know, you've been thinking a lot of you get come on my channel because you feel unloved and unwanted with a specific person. I know that's how a lot of you come to my channel. But as you come here and you listen to I am loved, I am wanted, I'm secure, I'm supported, I'm a priority, I am important, I matter and I am first best, you start to feel better and you change your thinking. So all this other stuff's the same. You're going from unloved to loved. You're going from what the astrologer said to what you want. You're going from understanding that the universe is a focus-based universe and it photocopies you. It photocopies you. Chung, chung. Photocopy. Circumstance creates itself. Chung, chung. Photocopy. Circumstance creates itself. Okay? So that's how it works. Everything that goes out from here, from here, from here, thoughts, feelings, and beliefs, that goes out and it brings in situations, okay? The universe is only responding to you. I'm going to put a YouTube down the below called Asking for the Universe to Give Me. That's a good one to revisit. So lovely question. Lovely question. Now, of course, that's only my opinion. Some of you may think otherwise and you have every right to do so. So, but this is my channel. So I'm saying what I want. <laughs> Lots of love, everybody. I'm still jet lagged, so you'll have to excuse my madness for the next few days. <laughs>